What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of stuff going on in the Atlantic, and we have a lot of stuff that's going to be starting to go on in the next week or so. Here's the big story we have right here. We have a area of interest, well, not an area of interest, but we have a tropical wave over here in the central Maine development region. I've been looking at this, and I've been monitoring this, and I've been talking with David Schlotthauer. He has tagged this as a potential area of interest. I've reached out to a bunch of other people in my tropical team on Storms United. We're we're potentially going to tag this as an area of interest right here. This is not an official area of interest by the NHC, but this is something that this is per- personally we've been watching because of the potential for development down the road. Here's some of the cliff notes we have. So this morning I received uh, something from one of my members of the tr- of my tropical team in Storms United. Basically, this is a screenshot of what the Europeans showing as basically their chances for tropical development in the next 10 days or so. Down here, we're going to go ahead and disregard this. This is near South America right here. We're going to disregard this. But this is the area we need to pay attention to here in the Bahamas right here. It's that area of interest that we're potentially going to be tagging, this tropical wave right here. It is, at this point, anticipated to be moving north of the Lesser Antilles, except by a couple of outlier ensemble runs and potentially making a path similar to that of Hurricane Isaias back in 2020. And based off of these numbers right here, there is a 45% chance development according to the European run that I'm showing you right here of tropical development happening. So that's why I'm re- really paying attention to this. And it's going to be near the Bahamas, where uh, similar to where Isaias Um, made its path so definitely something we need to pay attention to as this is such a huge proximity to land keep in mind we're still at least a week away from any potential land impact but i wanted to bring this up to your guys attention and we're going to go ahead and play devil's advocate and see what's working for and against it as well as the other tropical waves that are in the atlantic right now here's what's easily working for it Global sea temperatures, temperatures of 29 plus degrees Celsius across pretty much all of its path until it gets to the Bahamas, where it'll increase even more to 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, which is about 88 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States. 29 degrees Celsius is 84 degrees. More than enough warm water for hurricane development right there. So that's what we have looking into this right here. If we actually zoom in a little bit, to the Bahamas over here. We're seeing a huge area of 30 plus degrees Celsius, 86 plus degree Fahrenheit right there. And then a lot of isolated areas of 31 plus degree Celsius or 88 plus degree Fahrenheit temperatures over by the Bahamas. So that in itself is already pretty interesting to take a look at because already we're seeing way warmer than average water temperatures. And I said this yesterday and I said this today before and I'm going to continue saying this. We're basically at the point where these waters are no longer ahead of schedule. This is house money, and the big question for the next month or so is how warm are these waters going to go, and left unchecked, how how much fuel is it going to leave? And so far, some of the values I've been looking at are pretty disturbing. The OH, this is ocean heat content, and if we take a look at the OHC across much of the Caribbean. We have a huge area of 175 plus ocean heat content. You don't see anything this expansive right here. It's not looking good at all right there. But keep in mind, there's nothing going to be moving through the Caribbean, at least for the uh, for the next couple of weeks or so. So just still something to pay attention to. But for now, just keep an eye on it. And we'll continue to update you here as we get more information. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear values we have popping off right here. And the wind shear values across the Atlantic continue to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, For example, across the main development region and in the eastern Atlantic, we're still seeing these fluctuations in shear right here. That's pretty typical for early August. The shear is expected to start decreasing. And if we take a look at this area in the Caribbean, for two months we were seeing an area of plus 50 even in some cases, plus 60 knots of wind shear. 
Now we're down to 25 knots at its peak across the Caribbean. We're going to go ahead and give you the shear forecast as well as the moisture to see what's going on with it. In fact, before we even do that, we're actually going to go ahead and show you the moisture right now to kind of give you a better glance at it. As you can see with a lot of the dew points, a lot of the moisture, there is still some dry air in the Atlantic, so keep that in mind, especially in this area of the Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean, where there is weaker wind shear, but there is dry air kind of stopping really anything from developing. So this dry air continues to be our last line of defense. So we're going to go ahead and first talk about the shear forecast right here. And here's the shear forecast from the European. It, the shear is for the next 48 hours expected to increase across parts of the Atlantic, at least for the next 48 to 72 hours. And then it starts to fluctuate a bit more. But by around five days out, things start to really calm down. And this is about the point where I would cons uh, where I would consider uh, watching that tropical wave as it approaches the Antilles, starts moving north of there. This whole area from the Lesser Antilles all the way to the Bahamas has weak to no a little wind shear. Now we're going to go ahead and cross-check this with the relative humidity. There's still relatively dry air across m uh, much of this these areas right here. So that's probably what's going to be in limiting development for now. But right now is right now. So we're going to have to show you the next few days after that. So this is now seven days out. We're continuing to see fluctuations in the intensity of the shear right here. And this is what we'll have by 10 days out. If we go ahead and cross check that with the moisture, things across the Western Atlantic do start to get a bit more moist. We're going to go ahead and show you the GFS to kind of give you a better idea of what's when this is going to happen. What's going to happen is before there's going to be a low pressure system starting to build up in the Southern Sahara, and it's going to start pushing more of the Sahara dust to Europe, starting around the second to third week of August or so. so uh, there is one last bit of Sahara dust and some dry air that starts to intrude the Atlantic around the third week of August, but by that point, it's at, by that point, it's severely limited. Basically, this is where we are on August 16th right here. We still have some Sahara dust, and we still have some dry air across parts of the Atlantic over here, but the western Atlantic is starting to look more conducive. The main development region is starting to look con more conducive, and this whole blob of Sahara dust is not nearly as much as it was before. And at this point, the Sahara dust is going to start moving more into Europe starting around the second to third week of August or so, as I, as I previously said. We'll go ahead and start with the European. And the European ensemble does have stuff starting to potentially develop starting in the next eight days or so, kind of as it is approaching the Bahamas, similar to what we were showing you right here. And things start to organize, develop. We're seeing some ensemble runs of potential hurricane uh, hurricane scenarios right here potentially striking florida the carolinas uh even some crossing into the gulf and potentially strengthening further right there but by that by the time it really starts to get act together it's going to be about seven days out so definitely something to monitor however for now take it with a grain of salt we're going to go ahead and also show you the gfs ensembles to kind of cross all, all this and as you can see with the gfs they are showing some potential development with this tropical wave a little bit earlier, about five days out starting. However, considering the dry air and considering, like, even though there's good wind shear, there's still plenty of dry air that's going to limit development for the short term. However, by the time it approaches the Bahamas over here, things start to change, and the GFS has a bunch of scenarios, potential hurricane hurricane scenarios right here. We're actually going to go ahead and cross-check this with the GF, uh, the GFS run right here, and yeah, as you can see, that it, it, clear, it checks out. Take it with a grain of salt. It's still 9 to 10 days out. Things are still pretty in question for now, and we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of the channel is to get more people engaged with weather, but with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.